So obviously you're going to cut this up, aren't you? You can edit this. Oh, good. Thanks. Oh, well, am I all right wearing my West Ham shirt? Is that all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Uh, as a Millwall fan, I'm no, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, you're a Millwall fan. Oh. I'm joking. I'm really I'm joking. sorry about that. I'm, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's not why I'm wearing this. So I'm an undergraduate graduate at Leeds College of Music and the Guildhall. And I was in the National Jazz Orchestra for a number of years. So uh, when I moved to London when I was 21 and doing the Guildhall, I was already sort of freelancing quite a lot as a saxophone player and doing sessions. And saxophone was my world. I thought nothing was more important than jazz in life. So I was doing lots of sessions and obviously with different brass players. And then a friend of mine said, Blur need a, you know, uh, there was some depths basically for, you know, for me to go and play sax. So, um, I went and did some shows as a dep, and then after that, um, the section that was doing the gig, that done the recordings, couldn't couldn't do the tour that was coming up. So they said, "Would you like to do it?" You know the card protocol. We don't just nick the gig. We said, "Yes, we would love to do it." And then Blur were very happy for us to do it, and that was it. And then once I'd seen Blur play live and saw how much effort and skill, and it was cool, it was crazy. You know, I thought this is the gig. I think this will this will be a good one to keep him with. And you know, after that, Dave and I became very good friends over the, and that was it really. I haven't left. <laughs> I'm in the feeling that you know I like to play music and and enjoy it. And uh, actually, uh, you know, Blur was just definitely something where you thought this is a band that puts himself on the line. And it's infectious, and I really respect that. I think uh, to begin with, it was. Uh, I mean, you know, Damon was very about getting the theme, you know, uh, we, we worked on the theme uh, and that was kind of the, the sum up the sword and sum up ah, King Arthur, all the rest of it. So that we had our lovely heroic theme, which is easy. And then after that, it was like, OK, we want other themes. We want Morgana theme. We want we want the darkness. We want the kind of, you know, the the. The, the the not just the heroics we want there's other parts of the story we want a Merlin thing we want to create some magic so really it was kind of like we wanted to make something that conveyed the magic of of Arthur and Merlin and the wonder and the spectacle on a scale is that we wanted really to do this electronic score with synthesizers being almost like orchestral instruments we wanted to do something a bit more pastoral and smaller um, but the scale of the film itself required something much bigger. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, just working with themes and then, then, then being adapted throughout. You know, Joe's doing other projects um, that are coming up and it'll be, be great to be able to work with him again. I mean, Broken was our first venture with Electroway Bureau and um, that, was, that was a really nice one. We had a lot, we had a lot of free reign with that really we were able to do pretty much in, in terms of our orchestral our, our palette of instruments we were very specific about that and stuck to it and it's always the wonderful thing is that once you've got your instrumental palette then you can find all sorts of ingenious ways of combining them there's there's a lot of people in the band you know we've got a 13 piece band without guests um, and so, you know, my role as a keyboard player is, I mean, obviously to learn my things, but it's setting up the show. So, you know, for instance, uh, if we look at what, how we set up the now now in the same way with the humans or, or, or one of the recent ones where we look at the master sessions, we look at the master mixes and we work out who can play what and we make it so that we find the parts that are good to play and that give it some musicality so they're not just off or everything off tape. So it's about, you know, programming up keyboards, sampling keyboards. Um, uh, but as an MD, you know, you've got to be around everyone's parts, so to speak. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. You need to be around everyone's musical parts. We, know, we know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and be very clear about, uh, you know, what needs to be done. And you're working on how long rehearsal should be, the schedules, you're working with the management, you're working with the production. Um, 
And then, of course, you know, with with uh, you're working with obviously how Damon wants to present it. It's a bit like a conductor. You need a music. It's, it's, it's that big that it does require a musical director. You can't just have everybody go, oh, should we have a break now? What do you think? Oh, should we have a break? What should we do now? What song should we do? You need somebody in control of that who says, right, here's the set. And it's got down to working out set lists. It's down to working out what our hours of work might be, how many days do we need to rehearse so much? You know, this is the conversation at the moment with lockdown. You know, we might do some shows in August, you never know. It's possible. It's like anything, we don't know at the moment. But if we do shows, we, we, we'll be looking at maybe doing, what, what's our set length going to be? How long is the set going to require? Okay, so what songs should we do? We'll make a l list of songs. We need to work out how many days that's going to take to rehearse those songs. How many days is affordable? You know, obviously there's a lot of people involved. You're paying them every day. It's a lot of money. So there's budgets you have to work to and you have to try and fit within that. It's being over everyone's area of expertise in a way and just, and being nice. Being nice to everybody and be instructive and be polite and respectful. Very important. I will definitely say the life aquatic. Mark Mothersbaugh, I mean, you know, that's my favourite score of all time. It's one of my favourite films of all time. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love his music. I love the, the variety. I love the David Bowie covers that are done by, in a Bra in Brazilian so Bossa Nova way. You know, you know what I mean? It's got, it's just synths. It's a dum -chi, dum -chi, dum -chi. like a Casio drum machine. It's just this wonderful, I don't know, it's just great. I, I just love scores like that. And that, that is, you know, I, I mean, the other one I, I really, really love is It Follows. That score by Disaster Piece, brilliant film. It Follows, that score is magnificent. You know, I'm very envious of these, um, these, these, these guys who are doing these wonderful electronic scores. They're great. It's great. It's really great. And it follows, it follows Other Life Aquatic.